All right, how are we doing, Mrs. Weedor? Very good. Want me to take over the waiting room? Sure. Okay, perfect. So welcome everyone. We're gonna get started. And I'm so excited to see so many folks able to join us tonight for our Extended Studies Parent Information Night for French Road Elementary. And I wanna introduce Mrs. Renee Weedor, who I have worked with in several capacities uh, throughout both of our times in Brighton, but um, really who does such a wonderful, wonderful job with all of your children in relation to extended studies and supporting their classrooms and their teachers. And I think um, you'll really have a lot of questions answered tonight. You'll learn something about what your children are experiencing at school during the day, which will be great. And um, I would just ask, I'm going to put both of our emails into the chat. And if you have any questions that come up regarding your own children or um, something a little bit more personal to your experience at French Road, whatever that may be, if you would wanna access us via email and ask that question or pop it into the chat and we'd be able to get back to you um, via email or phone tomorrow, um, that would be great. But take it away, Mrs. Widor, and we can't wait to see what you've got. Okay. <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see so many faces here tonight. Um, I know that we wish and I wish that we could be in person so I could meet you, um, you know, face to face, but we knew that this was probably the best way to um, touch in and touch with many of our families here at French Road. So we're so happy that you were able to come out tonight and we are going to give you a lot of information about what the extended study services offers at French Road. Um, so I've got a lot of information to share. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. Okay. I've got it for you too if you need anything. Okay, thank you. I think we're good. Let me just check that one more time. Yep, there we go. All right. Can everyone see the screen okay? Okay, great. <laughs> All right, so welcome to um, the presentation tonight about extended studies at French Road. So I've got so much to share with you, so why don't we go ahead and get started? So we're gonna kind of go through current news in extended studies, what we've been up to this past month and a half. Um, we're also going to be looking at um, where we are in extended studies in terms of our program evaluation that was done a couple of years ago and how well we're meeting some of our Board of Ed goals and recommendations. Um, we'll look at the continuum of services of extended studies, what the service models look like at French Road, um, the curriculum, additional services, how our students are identified, and kind of our homeschool communication piece. So just, I'm happy to meet you all. Um, like I said, I wish that we could meet face to face, but I've been teaching in Brighton since 1998, which is a really long time, more than I want to count. Um, I want to, um, I can't believe that I've actually been teaching for almost 30 years, but um, I've served in a lot of capacities. Um, most, most of the time I was a fifth grade teacher at French Road. I was also the K-5 math and instructional leader for a short time. I've also worked as one of the summer instructional leaders uh, the past few summers and helping teach professional development to our teachers. Um, I've got a variety of uh, teaching certifications and I recently um, completed my study at Nazareth College in gifted and talented education. So it's my new um, kind of recent passion that I've been spending a lot of time learning about. Currently in extended studies, I'm excited to say we are servicing 235 students right now at French Road. Um, so these are the current numbers. They fluctuate from time to time, but we've got 81 third graders, 74 fourth, 
63 in fifth, and we have 17 independent projects going on right now. So it's a lot of students. I'm getting to know quite a bit of them quite well. I've known many from um, last year as well, and um, we're having really a, really a fabulous time. So hopefully, if you have a student currently receiving service, you've heard about it, um, and you've heard about some of the wonderful things we've been doing from your child. So currently this week, um, in, in a nutshell, third graders are studying the top 15 dream jobs um, as described by kids. So that's been really fun for those folks. The fourth graders, we spent some time looking at multiple intelligences um, as part of our autobiography unit. And fifth graders, we're working on um, climate change currently. And um, we studied, today we studied a demonstration of the greenhouse effect. Um, this picture is actually a picture of our ice melt challenge uh, to show what glacier melt kind of looks like and um, kind of show it on a small scale as compared to what's going on in the world today. So in terms of um, Brighton and what our district believes in terms of our gifted and talented um, population and, and deserve, um, serving all of our population for enrichment, programming. Um, this is the, the what the Board of Education has put out in terms of um, providing enrichment services for advanced learners and or students with gifted traits. Um, it's a way to um, provide a, a whole gamut of service really um, to help meet some of the needs of our students. Um, New York State also has gone um, as far as to define gifted students um, and what are some of those outstanding talents that we're looking for to, to recruit to our programming. Um, and, you know, we're looking at, at reaching out across um, all types of ethnic, cultural populations, as well as economic strata. So that's one of our goals, then we'll talk about that in a little bit. The possibly gifted indicators is something that you may be familiar with if your child has received a possibly gifted identification from Council Rock. Um, this occurs when um, students um, are showing a majority of these traits. Um, letters will come from Council Rock from Andrea Yalman, and she will um, explain that your child's been identified as possibly gifted and um, will be receiving some type of um, service in terms of enrichment programming for their time while they're you know, continuing through their education at French Road and beyond. So this is something that um, the teachers use frequently at French Road as well as in Council Rock. Um, one of the things that we worked on recently was just a program evaluation for what extended studies had offered in the past and what it could potentially offer to our students in the future. And one of the goals we really came to understand was we needed a better understanding of the needs of our underrepresented population, um, what those learning needs look like, and how Brighton could meet those needs um, through extended study servicing. This translated into six action items that the district has really taken upon itself to um, look really closely at existing programming and decide on where changes or tweaks can be made in order to cast a wider net. Um, to encapsulate more students who might have some of those learning potentials. So we'll go through each of these actions just really briefly um, to give people information in case you aren't familiar. So reframing our lens is really a way that we can, as a district, um, look and scout for talents um, rather than deficits. Um, not so much um, your traditional high intelligence, but talents in a variety or of areas and topics. So our identification um, procedures have been adjusted slightly so that we can um, identify students who have talents within different subject areas and we kind of do that by unit. Um, and we'll kind of get into what those service models look like. We're also using more equitable identification practices so that we have more of an opportunity, again, like to cast that wider net. So we have three different opportunities 
for our students to participate throughout the course of one school year, um, kind of organized around each of our different extended studies units. So within those, those time frames, you're looking at um, you know, branching out to students who may have never had an opportunity to participate in the past, or students who continue to want to participate and demonstrate some of those abilities to continue participation. The continuum is something we're really, I think, mostly proud of at Brighton, that we offer a wide range of enrichment services. We don't like to call it the extended studies program per se, it's more of a continuum of service. So there's services that range from differentiation in the regular classroom to extended studies cluster groups that occur in a, in a pullout setting. There's also individual options where students kind of participate in an independent project. Um, we have course acceleration, we have math team, we have a lot of variety. And I think that, you know, being able to tap into some of the needs of our advanced learners can look differently at different times throughout the year or at different grade levels. So, um, you know, being able to offer such a wide range of service is something that um, is pretty exciting and unique, I think. I think when we, we look at identification, um, looking at the data and, and being able to provide something that's meaningful um, and purposeful is what we're looking to do. Um, so that we're really um, looking at students and their individual learning needs and how they can those can best be met. So this data is going to look differently at different times throughout the year. It's going to look differently. Um, in each grade level. So um, clarifying the, the vision of what is going to be taught in extended studies helps to frame what those identification criteria is going to look like. Fostering the talent development is another piece that we're looking at um, spending a lot of time with. And that again is looking to provide learning environments where we're going to be having students participate where they find that this is a very um, big strength for them, a, an interest for them, an area that they're going to excel in or already have excelled in. Those are the students that we kind of want to bring to the table. And depending on the, the subject matter and the focus and the skills that we're going to be working with, um, that can vary and, and, and tap in and bring in different students at different times. And then our final um, focus is to just provide professional learning um, and professional development to teachers, um, to all of our homeroom teachers, so that students can participate in this kind of high, higher level learning throughout their day at French Road, not just within the time of, you know, 30 minutes in an extended studies classroom, but throughout the day and how that can, those needs can best be met. So there's a lot of opportunities where I work with teachers closely and we can look at individual learning needs and, and then meet those needs through some of these opportunities. Again, the continuum of service is just, you know, showing that students really differ in their skills and interest in learning style, you know, that this continuum is able to meet those needs at different times at different grade levels. And I know it sounds like it varies quite a bit, and it kind of does. Um, some students participate in more than one opportunity at one time, um, and some um, you know, maybe just have one experience. So we're looking at providing a wide range of experiences for students for some of these higher level learning experiences. So to get a little bit more specific in terms of the building, um, currently the third and fourth grade are working in a flexible cluster group model. Um, if you participated in or, or attended the the information night from last year, you know that last year it was just third grade who participated in this model. Um, so we've now created an opportunity for third and fourth to both have the flexible cluster group model. And fifth grade is um, working in the traditional classroom model that many of you are probably used to if you have older children who went through French Road. Um, 
everyone is participating and has an opportunity to complete an independent project. Um, and uh, that's something that we have multi-age classes for that in, you know, across grades three through five. So again, the third and fourth grade um, right now is working through the flexible service model. Um, it, what we do is there are three units per year in each third and fourth grade. And we select between six to seven students per homeroom to come to extended studies and participate in a small group or small classroom instruction. Um, the way that um, these students are selected is I um, provide a video or a lesson to each of the homerooms just to introduce the unit and what we're going to be studying, what some of the topics are going to be, and what are some of the skills. This really gauges interest, it motivates students, it helps them to know what it's all about, and then um, students kind of express their interest at that time. Um, then myself and the homeroom teachers meet to look at the students who've expressed interest. There is a, an identified set of skills that are particular to the topic or the unit of study. And the students are then identified based on that criteria. Um, we're looking at students who, um, you know, meet most of the criteria so that um, we know that it'll be a good fit for them to participate in this um, topic of, or field of study. So then students who are selected um, will start extended studies. They come to the extended studies classroom three times a cycle this year. Um, we are excited to be able to offer that. It's during their win time for classes that are 30 minutes in length. And like I said, there are three units. Uh, and the first unit is from September through December. We have a second unit, January through March. And then our third is April through June. Uh, Seesaw is still the learning platform that is used for all of our activities, announcements, and messages. And the third grade just does, they don't have their iPads yet, so we haven't actually um, gotten into Seesaw just yet, but as soon as that happens, they'll, they'll kind of be on board with Seesaw as well. So the fifth grade is working with kind of our older traditional model of service. Um, where you have identified students who are who have been previously identified and they participate in small group instruction. Um, it's also three times a cycle during wind time for 30 minutes in length. And we're still teaching um, three units per year around the same time frame as the third and fourth grade. Seesaw is still used for the fifth grade as well. And um, I, I do want to also mention that this is the final year for this traditional model. Um, the, the plan is for next year for third, fourth, and fifth grade to all participate in the flexible service model so that the whole building will kind of be under this new approach um, and meeting some of our board goals um, for extended studies and how to make the program and the service uh, more inclusive. So these are the, the curriculum for, um, these are our units for this year. Um, third grade is studying careers right now. Fourth grade is studying autobiographies and fifth grade is studying human impact and climate change. Um, and then we're going to be moving into um, third grade. We'll be working through a space odyssey. Fourth is time travel and fifth is gonna focus on culture. Third grade for our final unit at the uh, springtime will focus on unsolved mysteries. Fourth grade focuses on inventors and entrepreneurs. And fifth grade is working through um, a United Nations ambassador project. So you can see that the units kind of vary in topic. Some are more a humanities approach, some are more of a STEM approach. Um, so depending on what the topic is, the skills, um, that the students will demonstrate and practice during this time are going to vary. So we have additional services um, that I want to also mention that occur as part of extended studies that you may not be aware of. The passion project is what we've now called our independent project group. So this is not just going to be me meeting with students on an individual basis anymore. We've created this into now a class. So students will meet with other students who are pursuing a topic of interest, um, something that they're passionate about and interested in. And what we say is what lights your fire in your heart. 
So that's kind of why our, we have our emblem here. Um, and then they will conduct in-depth research that is guided through their classroom visits with me. The students come to me one time a cycle for about 20 to 30 minutes. And the small group that, that meet together, we always discuss the process. We discuss what uh, folks' passions are, what they're doing for their projects. Um, and then we present our projects to each other when we're finished. Um, there's no due dates for these assignments. Students work at their own pace. Um, and it is all voluntary and optional. And students can join at any time. There's also consultation uh, where the homeroom teachers will meet with me to discuss strategies and teaching resources um, that will kind of work to extend their classroom curriculum um, to meet the needs of some of their high achieving students. So this service can happen at any time as well. Um, and you know, I meet with teachers on a regular basis in order to provide some of that extension in their instruction. Um, differentiation is, an, is another service that is provided where, um, in this case, um, I am helping the homeroom teachers to kind of adapt strategies um, to change or alter the instruction to meet some of those learning needs. So um, I would say that the difference is consultation is more adapting the curriculum or extending the curriculum, and this is more of adapting the instruction um, to meet the needs of some of our high ability learners. Math team is also going to be in play this year, if you aren't familiar. Um, this is an after school activity that challenges students in a variety of math problem solving experiences. Um, students will learn to use creative approaches to solve really complex math problems and invent math in a way that is going to be maybe different. It's some head involves a lot of risk taking and creative use of problem solving. Students work independently, but they also can confer with their peers as they work uh, through the difficult problems. And it will start in March. Uh, it usually runs about three Fridays after school in March from around 3.30 to 5. So look for information about this to come home in January. And students, any student can sign up for, for this service as well. And this is an after school club. So in terms of identifying our students, uh, I just want to say that the um, current shift in our programming and, and the use of the cluster model, um, service model is really allowing us to cast a wider net for enrichment and open it up to students who may never have had the potential or have, have maybe never had the opportunity to exercise their potential and, and be able to demonstrate their ability to work through an enriched curriculum. So it is allowing us to provide those enriched learning experiences to more students. And the recruitment for each of our cluster groups occurs during September, December, and March for each of the different units. The criteria, as I spoke before, is related to the aptitude, it's, in, it's related to interest, it's related to their skill area within each of the topics and fields of study. Students should meet a majority of this criteria in order to participate. It isn't, you know, criteria that's in terms of like a test score or something like that. It's more in terms of they show um, a strong interest in technology skills. They show an ability to be creative and think out of the box to solve real world problems. It, it, the criteria is, is uh, more meaningful and is able to be more holistic in terms of looking at the whole child. And I would say that most of our teachers, what we're encouraging everyone to do is to look for the thinkers in their classroom who might benefit from this. Um, they're not necessarily or don't have to be the strongest performers in the classroom, but they have to be your students that have you know, unique questions, um, they thirst for more knowledge and they think out of the box on different classroom tasks. Usually those students are, are a really good fit for, for these types of curriculum experiences for, for our kids. 
I also would say that in terms of identification using the cluster um, group model, um, when you, your child is invited to participate, um, parents will receive an email from me directly explaining the unit, how they were come to being identified and, and the times and you know everything about the class, all of the, those logistics. Um, I, I would also mention that it is unlikely that your child would participate in every cluster group during their grade level because, um, you know, extended studies is the service is a continuum, like I said before, and it's not just one service that we're going to meet the needs of our advanced learners. It's, it's a wide range of services. So um, your child may participate in more than one, they may not. I guess it just depends on the criteria. It depends on how many students um, have expressed interest and how many students are really a good fit for each of those uh, you know, subject areas that we're looking at closely. Differentiation, again, is one of the foundations of extended studies and being able to, uh, for me to go into the classroom, team teach with teachers, meet with teachers, to provide and support instruction through a wide variety of measures is something that I'm always willing to do and have done quite frequently in the past. So please reach out if you ever feel at any time that this is something that your child would benefit from. If you feel like this is something that your child would be interested in, if any of the services that I've mentioned today are, are something that would describe your child, that you feel that your child would benefit from, if your child ex has expressed interest in any of these, the student reviews process takes place every March and November at French Road. And this is a time where I meet individually with um, cl every classroom teacher, administration is part of this, all of the service providers meet, and we discuss every student that attends French Road. Um, we discuss any type of learning needs that might be present at a certain time or have displayed themselves throughout the course of you know, our time together. And this is where services like the differentiation, the consultation, independent projects, they might be broached and, and offered as an opportunity for your child. So um, this is something that will occur. And if you have any concerns prior to, you know, when these times take place, I would kind of express those concerns to your child's homeroom teacher or reach out directly to me. Because fifth grade is working with the traditional model of extended studies, potential candidates to participate in that service are identified through the student reviews process at this time. This is also the time when students will be reviewed for participation in extended studies at 12 Corners Middle School. Um, when students go there, the, the class is part of their schedule. They visit that class um, as part of all of the many different classes and teachers that they would visit throughout the course of their schedule. So this is a time where that, that identification would happen as part of student reviews um, during the third grade uh, school year. So like I said, you can reach out to me, Marin, um, any of us, you know, in, in, in the office at French Road or your child's home teacher to kind of learn more about, you know, what is being offered and, and what we can, we can help out with. I think in terms of this communication for, for our service, I do have 235 students right now, but I am more than happy to answer any of your questions, your emails. Um, I'm happy to chat with you on the phone at any time. The um, homeschool communication piece, if your child is invited at any time to participate in any piece of our extended study service, you will be notified um, through an email through me that will give all of the specific information. You can also venture on to Seesaw to check out what we've been working on. Um, your child has a wide variety of activities and especially with our fourth and fifth graders, they've been working through many, many activities already through this year and part of their units of study. And like I said, the third graders, they'll be um, logging on to Seesaw pretty quickly um, and, and as soon as they receive those iPads. 
Because the extended study services are organized in three units per year, they are timed um, so that I can reflect and um, report on each of your child's participation in the report cards that will come out. So if your child is participating in any piece of extended studies, you will receive a um, you know, a particular notice from me in the report card, just describing their participation and everything that we learned and how well students, you know, your child has done during their time together. And then, you know, like I said, we do have a, a very detailed extended study services department on our website in Brighton. We as a department meet quite regularly to update this and make sure that it is reflective of our changing service model and how well that is meeting the needs of our students. So you can reach out and, and look at that website for more details about each of the schools and what they offer. And, and of course, you know to contact me at any time. Okay, so uh, that wasn't too bad. Okay, that actually went pretty fast. All right, so at this time, I'm going to stop my share. Um, I can also say that before we answer some questions, um, this recording and all the information you see here today will be available on our website at um, the Brighton website. It usually takes a couple of days, but it'll be right there, I think, on the news, the front page. So you can, you know, look on, tell a neighbor if they happen to miss it. Um, you know, just to kind of get all the information. And of course, you can reach out to me personally at any time. Hey, Renee, if I can um, just interject here, there's a couple of questions. I wanted to make sure you had a chance to get through the whole presentation sure, before thanks. we answered some of these because some of them were answered. Okay. Um, but could you possibly um, expand upon how student interest is gauged within the classroom, you know, how a teacher might make the determination of, oh, you know, your child has this interest in technology, like you mentioned. Okay, so in terms of the different units of study, there, there, like I said, there is a list of skill criteria that we're looking for, depending on, you know, if it's a STEM unit, humanities unit, I know that in the fourth grade, they're working through autobiographies, um, right now. So we're looking at students who um, have a strong interest in technology. That was one of those because it, all of the um, projects that we're working through are going to be videos and PowerPoints and things that are technology based. Um, students who have very good kind of interpersonal skills and kind of looking deeply at their learning style, looking at their strengths, their talents, their goals, their dreams, and kind of looking at those things. Um, you know, we're looking for students who are reflective about themselves and their work. Um, I can't remember the whole list, but it was kind of along those lines. So once I introduce uh, what, the, what the unit's going to be, then we, you know, we look at each of the students and see who's really interested. Students express their interest by telling their teacher, by telling me, and then the teacher and I kind of meet together to have a conversation. And we say, you know, what are we thinking in terms of these folks here? You know, would they be a good fit? And, you know, at that time we can have more of a, you know, close conversation about what exactly am I gonna be doing with the kids? Um, and, and, you know, is it gonna be something that they're going to enjoy and really, you know, do well in? So. You know, we're looking for all of our students to have really positive experiences with our programming. So this is just one of those ways that we can do that. Great, thank you. Another question is, um, will parents be notified when classroom visits are conducted? Uh, yes, I um, typically what happens is I have a schedule of dates where I'm gonna be visiting classrooms uh, to introduce the unit, I go into the classroom. Um, there is a video that I've made that kind of gives information and sometimes shows some sample projects that students have in the past have done and kind of making this collection. So as I do that, um, it's, it's in December. Um, will be our next round and each of the visits are staggered. So um, I can definitely um, give folks, uh, you know, just kind of shoot out an email in terms of when that's going to happen. I can let, 
you know, um, or if we want to kind of put that on a newsletter um, in terms of just, you know, this is when I'm going in for fourth grade, we're getting ready to start a new unit, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we can definitely do that. Um, but like I said, they are staggered in order to allow me time to be able to visit all the different grade levels. Great, thanks. Um, one other question that just came in was um, actually a really great one. And we um, had a lot of conversation about this this summer. So just kind of going back to um, this being offered during the wind time and some folks wondering, you know, what if my child participates in AIS or has math or reading AIS during that time, would they then not be able to participate in extended studies or what would that process be for them to participate? Okay, great question. So yeah, so that was one of our, our biggest priorities for extended studies. Um, we do offer it three times a cycle. Um, it is during the wind time. And what's happened with students who participate in AIS during that time is they are moved to a group that meets on the, their non-AIS days. So it's easy to just shift. I have, a, I actually have probably about six students that are doing this right now who have AIS during the time that their class comes to extended studies, but they just shift over really easily to another, say third grade group with a couple of other classes. And that is takes place on their non AIS days. So um, it is open to all students. Extended studies is not by any means limited or limiting to students who have other services that they are part of. So that's one of the reasons we love the, how inclusive this service has become. Great. Um, another great question. Can a child participate in multiple aspects of this, such as participating in the unit model as well as an independent project? Yeah, great question. So yes. Um, it, you know, I think at one time the independent projects was, uh, you know, kind of an either or type of situation, but we had such um, a, a wide interest in independent projects last year that we've made it into a class. I think it's really important that students are working and talking with their peers about the process of doing an independent research project and how exciting that is really to find something you're really passionate about and that you want to study during your free time, right? So this is um, just a great opportunity for students. And um, I do have probably at least five students who are participate, participate in both. So they come to extended studies as part of the cluster group model um, or part of the classroom model in fifth grade. And then they are also in addition doing the independent project. So we just find times that students can meet. Um, I usually, sometimes it's kind of nice to have like a grade of multi-age students of different grade levels. Um, but some of, the, some of the classes for independent projects are just say for a fourth grade. So it just depends on um, the teacher when they have availability and we kind of match that up with um, our classes and we put them in and they start at any time. Thank you. I'm just um, typing up and directing. If folks have questions about TCMS programming or anything like that, I'm just directing them back toward the links that you provided right in the presentation because all of that um, is, is available. And I've reached out and directly answered um, a few of the other questions. So I'm just taking a look here to see. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. These are really great questions. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I'd encourage anyone as um, I will take the presentation and Mrs. Weeder's recording and I'll put it in tomorrow's newsletter to families so that we can get that right out. And then over the weekend, once you have a chance to take a look um, you're, you're welcome to reach out to us after that as you've had some time to pause and reflect and take a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know questions always come up later. Feel free to send me an email, um, you know, and, and I can also, you know, talk to you on the phone if you have, you know, more detailed um, questions. It's, it's, it's a really exciting program. I'm excited to meet with you all today and explain to you, you know, what we're offering. The, you know, what we're offering is, is a lot more than we've ever offered in the past. Students are meeting with me every other day. 
Um, the enrichment is providing them with a wide variety of, of, of topics that are extending their curriculum. Um, you know, I'm meeting with so many students that maybe had never had an opportunity to participate in extended studies in the past, or, or maybe their older brothers and sisters never had the chance. So it's just really exciting um, and it's just making the program so inclusive and um, just really a nice opportunity for all of our young learners to um, have a chance to really enrich and push their learning experiences. Absolutely. And I'm responding right now um, to another parent who's just saying, you know, this is great, but wouldn't this be, you know, aren't we saying that all of our students are ready for these types of opportunities. And certainly I think that exact point is the reason why the district is moving in the direction that it's going in, as far as making these opportunities more accessible for as many students as possible, offering that initial lesson for all students. Um, I, you know, as a teacher at Council Rock, I had the privilege of, you know, working and collaborating with um, Judy Wegman and Andrea Yaman in the program there and being able to really see how students, all students within a class are able to benefit from this program, whether or not they attend the additional pullouts is really, um, really fun to see. So like I said, we will take the recording and we will get uh, this presentation out to all of you. And thank you so much. I think we hit a new record for a French Road Zoom event for extended studies. I'm so, so happy that everybody could be here with us on a Thursday evening. And um, we're really um, thankful for you all. And we're so thankful above all else for you um, and that you trust us and you share your students with us each day, your children. Um, and I know that, um, you know, observing Mrs. Weedor, they're in wonderful hands and they're having a blast. So yeah, so it's much. been, I wish I could meet you all in person. Um, I, I've really enjoyed your, your children. They come every day. They're so excited to learn and we're doing so many just really fun things that um, are just so interesting and the conversations that we're having are really exciting and enriching and the class size is small so um, students are really being able to kind of you know exercise their talents and show their gifts so thank you for sharing them with me um, and again if you have any questions at any time throughout this year just reach out at any time I'm happy to answer so thanks so much for coming bye thanks so much everybody Thanks, Mrs. Weedor. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Bye.